we can see the growing Russophobia in the world. How to overcome this Russophobia? What can you do personally as a Russian politician? If we store, stop behaving like we are behaving right now, there will be no Russophobia. There is no like organic Russophobia in any countries. Of course, like some people uh, which are usually pretty marginal in, in their own countries, they are afraid of Russia as just a big country, as a big Russian bear. But, uh, you know, just uh, two, three years ago, how many of them were, um, say, in the United States? You know, 5% of population maybe? You know, that's, that's it. Right now that's 50%. And that's all us. So the source of Russophobia is in Russia, not, not in the other countries. But in the same time, we have like a picture of Russia, which uh, partially uh, official Russia. If there are ch chances to develop this liberal in other Russia, and who can, I don't know, in develop this picture? And how could we, Ukrainians or somebody else, could help in this? Um, you know, I would be extremely cautious in using the word liberal because uh, in, in our cultures uh, many people understand very different things under the word liberal. Um, uh, I would uh, say that for me the choice is what is the most important thing. Is it the government, the state, uh, or is it a human being? Uh, and that's the most uh, important thing that in my mind Russia should transition. Uh, uh, it should stop believing in state it should start believing in a person and do whatever is possible to unveil personal entrepreneurship and whatever. What can be done is a, it is a kind of soft power. It's a soft power of European Union, it's a soft power of United States, it's a soft power of Israel, it's soft power of Canada, and of course it is soft power of Ukraine. And uh, I think that uh, uh, by understanding that you represent some power, uh, uh, you will help us a lot. Because right now, I don't think that you actually realize how much of authority you possess over a significant part of Russian population because of what happened in Maidan. Uh, even with official numbers, 15% uh, of Russian population, which is some 30 million people, which is almost the size, not almost, but it's, it's comparable with the size of uh, Ukrainian nation altogether, you know, they are sympathetic towards what's happening in Ukraine. They are against the war. They are ready to help. And you can say that there are not 45 Ukrainians, 45 million Ukrainians right now, but it's 75 million Ukrainians in, in terms of uh, people who share uh, 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 the same values. And you can use the power of those 30 million people as these 30 million of people want to use the power of these 45. You said that you spent a lot of time in Ukraine, but do you feel yourself safety in Russia? I am not feel safe in Russia because I cannot go in Russia for more than a year already. I am under arrest there. Uh, and uh, more than under arrest, you know, I am under international search. Uh, so I cannot go there. I still try to uh, 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 carry my duties as, uh, as a member of Russian parliament. I still vote, I introduce laws. My uh, 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 offices in, in my region, which is Siberia and Novosibirsk, are still working. You know, I have uh, political aides. Out of 45 uh, political aides, nine are in exile and 20 under po criminal prosecution. But those who are still in Russia, they're still working. You know, so I am, I'm trying to keep this structure afloat because I think that's what's important. Because people elected me and they authorized me to represent certain opinion. In, in, in the parliament, and even if I am alone, and I know that I am not alone because I have Dmitry Gutkov on my side, we have Sergei Petrov on my side, Valery Zubov on my side, they not always uh, dare to vote, but uh, you know, I, we know that we are common thinkers and I, I, I feel that we are together. There are talks that in uh, Russia nowadays it's hard to achieve publicity, to be on public if you do not cooperate with Kremlin somehow. How do you achieve to be on a public and big Russian policy? Uh, right now I cannot say that I am uh, big on Russian policies. Because I have uh, good media coverage, but that media coverage usually is related uh, to some new criminal prosecution, you know, or some new funds that I supposedly embezzled with some, some other state foundation. 
you know, but it's uh, uh, the rule of the games. At the end of the day, uh, Winston Churchill once said, you know, if not uh, uh, for Necrolog, uh, you know, all public uh, uh, buzz uh, is good. Um, you know, so uh, I'm, I'm trying to keep afloat. What uh, really saddens me is that I cannot go back to my region because uh, a lot of work of a deputy is related to personally talking to people and uh, I love uh, to travel in the countryside. Uh, I have a lot of supporters in the countryside, actually more than in the city. Um, I, I like to drink some agon with them, you know, uh, I like to meet, I like to sing songs, you know, I, I, I like to talk to them and I uh, feel that they're orphaned uh, without me being there, you know, and that is bad. Iberia is where the majority of our natural resources are, and, but also it's where our capital of innovation is, and that's my Novosibirsk, and that's the third largest uh, uh, city in Russia, and according to uh, the results of all the recent political campaigns, we see that uh, Siberia is the most liberated, the most opposition-minded. We have several important victories uh, of uh, opposition politicians in, in, uh, in the regions of Siberia uh, to the country of uh, central Russia. Uh, that's why I uh, really put a lot of hopes that the revival of Russia, political revival, social revival, will come from Siberia.